All right, guys, uh, so we're gonna tear down the interior first. Uh, you guys kind of saw what it looked like before. So we kind of took some pieces apart. The door panel has been off already, but don't worry. We're gonna show you how to take the door panel off on the passenger side, all right? But let's, yeah, let's get this thing all taken apart right now. So the first thing, I mean, we pulled the, uh, the center vent trim out. The center vent trim is actually only held in place by two screws, one there and one there. So we disconnected those two, pulled this trim out, uh, the clock, of course comes out before you take the two screws out. So we got that part taken out. Um, I, there's two screws up here at the top. So I pulled one Phillips there, one off there. And then there's gonna be two screws in here. So the, inside the ashtray, so you pop out the ashtray. And you take these two out. Okay. There's two in the ashtray. So two Phillips, two, four. And then open up this thing. There's four screws here. Two. So four Phillips screws inside the uh, center console, this thing lifts out. Okay, so we're gonna get this out of the way. So once that's out, there's only one final screw that's holding this whole dash panel in place. So we're gonna take that one out. All right, so put all the screws where you won't lose it. Um, the ashtray, the two screws in here, two, four, five screws really holding the center console, okay? Uh, the shift boot, you just kind of pull this thing down to release it. Then we're gonna twist it off. Okay, shift knob comes off. Uh, I'm gonna release the brake. Actually, we don't need to do that. So let's lift it up. Now, you wanna reach behind here. There's two plugs for the ashtray. So make sure you unplug those two. Okay, when these two plugs are unplugged, then this whole thing will lift away. So we're gonna lift it up, out, and through the, the, uh, the brake. There we go. So this whole piece comes out. So you can see how it comes out all as one piece. Um, if you're gonna use our carbon double din dash panel with the ashtray delete, then pretty much you can either set this piece aside or you can you know, use it for something else or save it. You won't need any of this uh, hardware. And all this stuff will be taken out. We are gonna take out the boot and the coin tray from this particular dash panel. We're gonna swap it over to our carbon fiber dash panel later. Um, let me show you a few other tricks on this thing. So with that all taken out, you can see the console is pretty much exposed. There's a couple more screws we're gonna take out. So there's a couple screws under the radio. All right, so let me take these two out. Oops. Oh, those are really tight. Okay, so we're gonna use a regular screw driver. There we go. Now, in this customer's case, he actually had the, the car, I think he was the original owner, and then he had a stereo shop put in an amplifier, a subwoofer, and then connect it all to the stock radio. But of course, the sound is not that great. So what we're doing here is we're gonna pull all the stock stuff out. And then we're gonna, we're gonna go to a uh, upgraded uh, sound system. All right, so let me see here. There's two more Phillips screws up at the top. It looks like the guy stripped this bottom screw, so we're gonna have to get it out a different way, but we'll get the rest of these out first. So that's one. Two. And there's two more, which are inside these little holes. So this is, you better use a manual screwdriver, but it's one right here. So what our object of the game here is we're gonna take the uh, radio out, but to get the radio out, we got to get the temperature unit out. And then we gotta get the, uh, the radio out afterwards. So they're all kind of integral pieces. And then we're gonna see what kind of wiring is back here. And you know, this is the fun part of working on a stereo that's already been done. You don't know what to find. And this customer has told us, you know, there's some issues with his uh, car electronically. Fuses blow, certain things don't work. So we're gonna have to uh, diagnose the issue as we go, but let's get this temperature unit out. So there's two plugs back here. You wanna reach back here and unplug it. Okay, let's plug one. Plug two, okay, so set this thing aside. You don't wanna scratch it. Uh, when we're ready to use it, we can put this thing back in the car. So we're gonna set this thing over here for right now. Put the screws over here. So the last thing's a radio. The radio, there's two Phillips screws at the bottom. We took one out, this one is stripped. So we're gonna have to take this one out later and then we got the two on the top. Just peeking back here, I can see a uh, PAC line out converter. You can see this is a pack uh, audio output converter. It basically takes high level signal, converts it to low level. Uh, so this is what was used in the last installation looks like with that amplifier you saw in the trunk. So we're gonna tear all this stuff out. 
Um, I think the car was ran with eight gauge power cable, which is way too thin. So we're gonna run a brand new four, four gauge cable. Uh, we're gonna relocate the ashtray, which was something important to say. So if you remember, this dash panel has the ashtray and a lot of questions come up as people are like, if we take the ashtray out, how am I gonna charge my phone? Or you know, if I smoke, what am I gonna do with this thing? So if you smoke, you know, I can't help you with that. You're gonna have to keep the ashtray. But if you don't, and you don't need the ashtray, we offer a pretty cool product. Let me go grab it and I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm back over here. I want to show you a couple things. So when we do a double din panel, you know, such as this particular one, this is our 100% carbon fiber double din panel. I mean, this thing weighs nothing, but obviously without the ashtray here, you don't have your cigarette lighter, but not to worry. For most people, I would say they want the USB to charge their phone. We do offer the USB. We offer a little kit like this. So you see this thing? This thing actually lights up. It's really nice. It has two USB ports. It's backlit. And this thing routes underneath and we plug it into the uh, hardwired into the uh, ashtray, uh, the cigarette lighter power. So this extends and then you can put this thing anywhere. Uh, we've done installs with this particular thing up in the center console here hidden. We've also put this thing inside the glove box and also hid it down here by the glove box here. We flush mounted it right over here. So this way the passenger and the driver both have their own USB ports and you don't lose anything. So. Uh, not to worry when you lose the ashtray. Um, this particular panel is gonna replace the other one. Uh, you can kinda of take a quick peek at it. We'll look at it later, but it's got all your OEM screw posts, which uh, is a huge plus because all the pieces will bolt in your, ash, your shift boot, coin tray, your e-brake handle is gonna pop out. But of course, it's not gonna fit right now because we got this radio in here. So let's get this radio out and then uh, let's take a look at what we need to do, all right? All right guys, uh, this is the passenger door because uh, we already pulled the driver's door apart, but essentially they're the same. So just follow the, uh, the same process for the driver and passenger door. And I'll show you how this is removed. It's actually pretty, you, you don't need many tools. I mean, a Phillips screwdriver, maybe a trim removal tool. But uh, I like to start with always removing the top two little pieces here. These are held in by nothing more than three uh, clips. So use a trim removal tool like this, work your way inside and carefully back it out until you get is to be released all right so there's two clips on this side make sure you don't lose the clips okay so there's two clips on this one and on this particular one the front one use a trim removal tool again like this all right and this one has uh, three clips so one two three and it looks like this particular car all the clips are there so that's good let's set this aside uh, the next piece I like to do usually is I like to get this little trim piece out of the door uh, the easiest way to do this is kind of reach your hand back there you have a trim removal tool that'll help you know, give, give you some space and then just pull out there you go release it and it comes out it slides out there's three hooks so your, your motion is out and out this way okay you pull as you pull up and that'll reveal the door handle so we can set this piece aside um, these screws are specific there's black screws here there's gold screws some of them have little spacers to them so they're kind of specific if you can't remember which screws go where Take a picture of it, that's what I usually do. But you got the two black screws here, so I'm gonna take those out, all right? You got the gold screws. And then there should be one more screw yeah, in here. There's two more screws in here, but you notice how the door handle came off already because I think uh, the previous shop when they did the install, they didn't put all the screws back in. So you're missing the two, but there should be two more screws back here. And I'll show you in a minute uh, how that works. So there's a cable. This cable has to be lifted. So you carefully lift it up and then swing the door handle out. All right, and then just uh, this piece just pops out at a right angle, the cable pops out. Make sure you unplug it. All right, so now you get this door handle. Uh, we'll set this thing aside. Uh, really good condition, this particular door handle, so everything's there. But the two screws that I was telling you about, there should have been two more screws here. You see these two right here? But there wasn't screws in there, and that's why the door handle came off quicker than I expected. So once that's out, now pretty much all you got is a perimeter screw. So the perimeter screws are all around here. So we're gonna take all these out. These are small black screws. Uh, just kind of look behind the trim. That's good. All the screws are there so far, there's two there. Let me go on the side so you guys can see better. There's one 
here, but that was still there. So far, so good. All the screws are in. On the driver's side, there was a couple screws missing on this door, so I think they obviously took these door panels off before. But so far, all the screws are here, so that's good news. That this one missing, so that one's missing. But you have one, two, three, four, five. So you should have six screws, but we have five, okay? These are all black screws we're gonna set aside. Now when this is all out, pretty much the door is out. What I like to do is lift out and work the tabs around the rubber uh, door trim. Be careful not to pull too hard. But you want to release all these clips all around here. So lift it around the, the plastic, the rubber. And as you do that, you're gonna see the door panel start to separate from the, uh, the door. Okay, when all of them are gonna lift it out, out of the way, then we just gently lift out and lift the door up. There we go. Gently lift up and the whole door will come apart. Make sure this thing slides underneath the hole for the uh, door lock. And then don't pull it too far apart. There's gonna be two clips. And uh, we're gonna just press on the clip, release that one. There's a little button here, you press, release this one, and that'll separate the door panel. So we're going to set this thing aside over here. Uh, just a quick glance, I mean, this is that cable that I was releasing earlier. This is for that little light that you have, the dome light. And then this is your uh, cable right here. This was the one that goes to the power window up and down switches. And this cable here was the one that we unplugged from the handle, which is operates the power door lock. So now that everything's out, you can see this door is in pretty good shape. Everything, the plastic's still in place. We're gonna remove the Bose speaker unit, and now we're gonna build our own six and a half inch uh, uh, speaker baffles, and then we're gonna install brand new Hertz speakers. We're gonna dynamat the doors. We're gonna run new speaker wiring through the doors to the uh, new double din radio along with our double din panel. So uh, this will be the next step. But I think for the teardown, we're gonna plug it here. Uh, a couple more screws here. We are not gonna reuse this whole speaker system, so we're gonna set this thing aside. All right, last screw, we're gonna take out the top one. Make sure you hold this thing or it's gonna fall, so hold it, and then take the last screw out. And then when that's out, this whole panel should separate like this. All right, so here's what the bowl speaker looks like. There's gonna be one on each door. So we're gonna set this thing aside. We're not gonna reuse this but we're gonna build a new speaker panel here for a six and a half inch uh, Focal, not Focal, I'm sorry, Hertz separate. So Hertz six and a half inch door and a tweeter. All right, so this will be set aside, but that pretty much covers the teardown on the vehicle. So here's all the stock door panels, stock speaker units, the Bose units all removed from the car. So you can see what they look like. Um, it looks like the previous shop, you know, tried to put some speakers in the, uh, the Bose units but I don't think that sounds very good uh, just because you're still running a high level signal. So we're gonna replace it, like I said, with components, new door speakers and new tweeters. So stay tuned. So the last thing we're gonna pull off here and, uh, is the subwoofer. Let's take a look and see how this thing was installed because we haven't really looked at this thing. We pulled the door panels off, right? Both door panels are out. Uh, we're ready to take the radio out and then we just gotta pull the subwoofer out. So. The customer told me that the previous shop, you know, he put this thing in and he doesn't know if the factory subwoofer is still back there. So we're gonna find out here real quick, all right? Let's see here. Whoa, 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 what happened here? Okay, hold on. Uh, it looks like this is not even a box. Whoa. It looks like a wood panel, if you can see here. And I'm not sure what this uh, sound, looks like they had some sound deadening material. So we're gonna take this kicker Okay, so they're using a kicker free air sub. So the theory is you don't need a box and that's why they mounted it this way. Okay, that makes sense. So you can see this whole thing is mounted with nothing more. Let's get this thing out of the car. Mounted nothing more than essentially a piece of wood that the subwoofer is mounted to, right? So, I mean, there's kicker's free air sub, but I don't think this is probably the best way to get sound. So let's set this thing down over here. All right, let's go back to the car and let's take a look at the, uh, the rest of what's in here. So if that's the case, my guess is if we can remove some of this white material, this is sound deadening material they usually find in the speaker boxes. Oh my. Okay, I don't know what this black stuff is. It looks like. Uh, okay, I don't want to know what that stuff is. But we're going to set that aside. 
But the good news is it looks like the carpet is still there. So they didn't cut the carpet, and that means the subwoofer is still back here, I think. Yep, there's a subwoofer. Okay, so your factory subwoofer is supposed to be there. Usually when you install one of these footwell subs, uh, I think uh, usually you take this out and the box goes into this crevice. But even then, you still lose leg room. But with this setup, it looks like, you know, you lost a lot of leg room because you got the subwoofer, you got the wood. You still got the factory subwoofer there. And then uh, we got to clean up this mess here. I'm not sure what all this stuff is, but we're going to clean all this stuff up. And you can see that power cable just kind of hanging there. So we're going to remove all that. We're going to upgrade everything to uh, brand new uh, speaker cables. But uh, okay, that's a nice surprise, I guess. All right. Be able to start installing new components. We're going to put the double DIN in. Uh, this particular owner decided to go with a double DIN that has a CD DVD player because he likes his music on his CDs. Uh, we're going to run a brand new, this is the old power cable, definitely not adequate for what we're planning. So we're going to run a new 4 gauge cable, we're going to fuse it really nicely, so I'll show you how that's done later. But you kind of just get an idea of the teardown. So the inside is all torn out, all ready to go. Uh, now comes the fun part, which is the installation. And then uh, of course we're going to pull the uh, stock, this amplifier out. So we're going to put in a nice brand new amplifier in there as well. But the uh, Join us next time, and then uh, we'll go through and show how the installation starts after we finish you know, cleaning up all the old existing wiring. But I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, as always, if you guys like what you see, please subscribe. That really helps us out. Um, and if you have questions, you can always shoot us a message. Um, any given moment, we always have three or four NSXs here getting work done. So uh, if there's something you want to do or something custom, just let us know. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching. This is Rick. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.